Hey there, I'm Tracy Rigdon, and this is the Contrast Project Lounge Podcast. In this podcast, each episode is a journey through captivating interviews, engaging dialogues, and personal anecdotes that explore the depths of arts, culture, politics, and everything in between. My goal? To leave you inspired, informed, and entertained. Often random, but always relevant, always real, and practically nothing is off limits. So whether you're an art aficionado, a political junkie, or simply someone seeking a fresh perspective, this podcast is for you. Are you ready for this? Let's do it. Welcome back to the program, kids. I want to thank you, you, and you for being here. And my special guest today is Mr. Bobby Kelly. Bobby, how are you? Good. How's it going? I, I'm doing fine. I'm doing fine. I know I, I told you earlier that I was, you know, I had a... I had my morning errands to run. I had to go, uh, I had to do my coffee, then go get my hair cut. And she trimmed the shit out of my beard and, and, and then the liquor run. And now I'm in the studio. We love to see it. We love a productive morning. <laughs> so, so my man, you are now, uh, you have, uh, a business that, by all appearances, seems to be very thriving, Bobby K Boutique. Yeah, we're busy. Like, this is definitely the busiest we've ever been. Um, we, like, really, during COVID, <laughs> when everybody was at home, we, like, took the time to, like, position our online to be, like, on fire. Like, we just built it from scratch. And we were like, we're going to do our best. We're going to see what happens. And then people at home you know, shopping, we're like cleaning us out left and right. And then we started sewing masks for everybody. And that was generating a lot of traffic for the website. So it's like we would put something up and it would be sold out in like a few hours. So we've just tr tried to keep that momentum by like constantly designing and uploading new fun and exciting things and trying to keep our finger on the zeitgeist of what's going on and <laughs> consistently going viral with random shit that we do that just we have no prediction <laughs> that it's going to happen, then it just happens. <laughs> it's, know, it's all yeah it's all random and and you you know you follow trends and and one of the trends that we talked about and that i've seen uh, you post about was your taylor swift candle yeah a journey yeah so every once in a while we'll have a candle and it'll just be out in the wild and i'll wake up in the morning and i'll have like a bunch of release forms I have to sign or something weird. And I, I know something's happening and I don't know what it is. And then before I know it, like three hours later, I'm people magazines knocking on the door, you know, or some other like, uh, you know, celebrity blogger is knocking on the door and they're trying to get information about something. I have no <laughs> idea what it is. And then 20 minutes later, it's like, I scroll down and it's like, you know, Pete Davidson announced his relationship with Kim Kardashian using prayer candle. And I'm like, I wonder whose that is. I wonder who made that. And so we've had to, this October with the Taylor Swift and Travis Kelsey thing, obviously we were like, I'm a Swifty by nature. So I was like, and I like football. So I was excited and I was like, this is fine. And then when we saw that he had got bought our prayer candle to give to her and then the feedback we got, from her people was that she very much so liked it was extremely funny but now it's like you know every morning i wake up and it's like another store is like can you get can you custom make this can you do this can you do this and it's like yeah one at a time <laughs> busy october one at a time well you know uh, the good kind of problems yeah these are all good problems to have i'd rather have these problems than like you know other problems so this is fine i can handle these these are my own in-house problems so let me ask you another question uh when it comes to uh uh you know working with the public and and you are obviously a uh out gay man uh and i want to ask you about your uh some of the uh 
obstacles you may have achieved or or, or experienced, not achieved, uh, experienced in uh, setting up a uh, shop and selling things and being online, being in the public, and some of the negative comments that sometimes, you know, head your way. Oh, man, those are my favorite. Those are literally my fuel. <laughs> when somebody says some weird toxic shit, I'm like, put this in my Rolodex of hate. I will literally use this to fuel myself. But it, for real, mostly like, you know, we get we've had weird stuff happen and we've had weird homophobia get spewed at us. Um, I, I kind of live for it because I just have this like personal philosophy that if you're that pressed about somebody else, you have your own internal demons to struggle with. And so by, by people <laughs> yep. telling me weird homophobic things, I'm like, just come out. We know it. We're there for you. Okay, girl, like, please, <laughs> you took the time to type this shit up on Instagram and send it to me. Who took the time? At, you took the time out of your day to do this, not me. So it's like, Who's got the problem? It's not me, you know? So like another, and we hear rumors and stuff about ourselves all the time, which I live for because some of the rumors I hear about myself are so crazy that I just like let them live. I'm like, I did do that. I did light that car on fire. Yeah, I did that. You know, just because they're so weird and stupid. Like one, one that we get constantly is that I'm faking being gay to get attention, which is a, that's a great one. I love that. Um, that's pretty good. Or like, yeah. Or, you know, it's like we hear shit like this all the time. I think it's entertaining. So for me, it's like I've always I've had this like I would say in the past three years, like when we first started, I would get like very upset because I'm like, you know, this is like my brand. It's my name. It's my livelihood, you know, and now that it's like I've got like a full staff that I love dearly that work really hard for us. Um, you know, I worry more about the big picture and not the small fries. I mean, we get like death threats from churches which is so entertaining to me like West oh, they're so, so so pious you know it's like like they see the prayer candle and then they start threatening us and i'm like what how does that work how does that work please explain to me so you want me to get rid of all the prayer candles because your perception is that we're being very specifically anti christian and i'm like this prayer candle has britney spears giving birth on it what are you talking about? This has nothing to do with religion. You know what I'm saying? It's like, it's it, it's so far out of the like realm of what you would perceive as, you know, factual Catholicism that I'm like, just leave it alone. But yeah, it's pretty entertaining to me at least. So we do get like, like during COVID and stuff was like, we got like death threats like every day, which was crazy. Like full caps, like you should be ashamed of yourself for making masks. You're just falling into the liberal government agenda. And I'm like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. okay, sure, <laughs> whatever. You're sitting at home bored and my ass is running itself ragged over here trying to make stuff happen. So I don't know who's more pressed. It's definitely you. It's not me. I'm so, uh, I'm so comically unbothered by this stuff that like my therapist is literally concern for me at points like you should care about that and i'm like i don't i really i don't care so i don't much. care i don't care yeah <laughs> yeah and it's like why like you know the thing too is like as like as somebody who like runs a business like we you know when we first started we like kind of set our like core values like how we would always proceed and it was, it was always like we would always make sure that we like protect our allies protect our community make sure that like when we're like putting merchandise out we always like are inclusive and all this kind of stuff and so it's like all in the same wheelhouse so when people come at us really hard i'm like well i know that we're like doing what we set out to do and i feel comfortable with what we're doing and we are you know active in the community and we're you know active philanthropists so it's like if you're mad at me over something so stupid as like a t-shirt i'm so sorry that you're that pressed but you know there's other shit in the world that we need to be worried about that's not a yeah. t-shirt you know, a T-shirt yeah, is the yeah. means to the end. So it's like, like my my poor husband, we have a T-shirt that says, my other ride is your dad. And it's like one of our top selling shirts. We think it's hilarious. So we ha he had it on when we were out one night. And this guy came up to us and was so visibly upset and was like screaming at us about the shirt. And we were just egging him on because we were like, it's a shirt. And he... He was like, but my dad's dead. And my husband goes, well, then I did my job. And he just like 
rolled off crying and came back two minutes later and was like, I realize that this is a shirt. I probably should not be this upset. We were like, correct. Welcome. That's the point. No, who's mad? Like, who cares? Yeah. Who has yeah. the time? I mean, I mean, yeah, so many, so many people get triggered by comments. And, you know, uh, a lot of the times, you know, I'm looking at their website and a lot of the stuff that is printed there is is basically just innocent humor, uh, innocuous. Yeah. And, I mean, it's just like you said, it's just a fucking T-shirt. It's just a fucking T-shirt or it's a sticker. Or it's just a <laughs> stupid fucking keychain. It's like and th- I feel like life is already hard. I think like as a gay yeah. person that has like, you know, like I grew up as a gay teenager in the 90s. I can fucking survive anything. I went to a public school. And I made it out. So I'm like, yep, if yep. you think your shitty little opinion about a sticker is what's going to take me down, oh, baby, <laughs> please think again. Oh, I know. I know. My my uh, my sister is gay. And uh, growing up, we were both born. She was born in 59. I was born in 60. So we're both in our 60s. Uh, and, yeah, we grew up in the 70s, 80s, you know. And uh, she she really did have a hard time growing up. Uh, she really did. And I, I recognize that. And to this day, her and I are like this. Uh, yeah, she's my best. Fr- she's my best friend. Yeah. I mean, that's the thing is like also is like a gay person. Like, I know that I'm like a rarity in Jacksonville. There's not a lot of like gay entrepreneurs that are like around my age. So it's like we got to stick together. So like, I'm always like willing to like, if somebody texts me or calls me and they're like, Hey, I have this problem I can't solve or whatever. I'm like, I will help you however I can, because there's not like, there's not a lot of people that have that same life experience that you can align with in, and as well as what we are dealing with now in our current climate that you can just like help and be a part of, you know, if that makes sense. So it's like, sure. Sure. Like there's a couple of like gay entrepreneurs in the city that are like really change makers you know, that are getting stuff done, that are like putting their money where their mouth is and like activating spaces and stuff like that. And it's like, when I hear critique of that, I'm like, you get to critique that when you put your money where your mouth is and you start doing stuff to like, you know, make stuff happen. Like, you know, for example, like you didn't have to start a podcast, but you wanted to, so you did. And a lot of people talk about the podcast they're going to do and they never do it. And then it's like- Five years. You know, it's Five years. Yeah. So it's like, it's just, act. it's like gay people have to stick together to activate other gay things. That's just how it is, you know? Sure, sure, sure. Hey, I tell you what, I tell you what, Bobby, let's get a little lighthearted here. Uh, okay. I'm going to ask you, I, I'm going to ask you, I'm going to ask you, what in the hell is it with gay men and their obsession with Cher? I fucking hate Cher. I don't know. I saw Cher live. You know what I'm talking about, like, though, right? What is? Yes, of course. I. The thing is, is I get that we have we we all have our like pop girls that we're obsessed with, but Cher for some reason to me is like a snooze. I don't know what it is. I think it's like she just came out like full ass hoe in the '90s and the '80s, and everybody was like, "Yes, yes, yes, we love it." But it's like, like when I saw her live, it was like watching a scarecrow and a bunch of pagans dance around it. Like that she didn't move, and then she just talked for. She talked. I think this show is about three hours, and if I had to guess, she probably talked for two hours of it. And it she was just talks like a stupid lot. shit. Yeah. She's like, "Oh yeah," she's like, "And this song reminds me of that one time that I got a phone call in my hotel room in the seventies, and they said, Cher, do you want to do this show?'" And I said, "Never. I'd never do that show." And then I called Time Warner, and I said, "And it's like, shut the fuck up, hit the hits. I want the hits." Please. <laughs> well, like we're seeing, I will yeah, tell we're going to go. Yeah, I will tell you. I will tell you. Uh, I am of the age that I saw Sh- uh, Sonny and Cher live mm-hmm. in the old, in the old uh, Jacksonville Coliseum. Uh, and the opening act was, uh, what's his name? A comedian, uh, David Brenner. Oh, wow. And I, I, yeah, 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 yeah. I'm going way back, probably before Dang. you were born. Uh, yeah, for <laughs> sure, for sure. Um, funny story. Uh, when we saw Cher, I was so gobsmacked by the sheer volume of lesbians there. 
And then on top of that, um, the amount of blacked out lesbians. So it was like an assembly line of stretchers and just a near unconscious lesbians. And I was like, it's you that's keeping this dream alive for her. Literally, like the elevator was like pulling them like one at a time. I was like, oh, my God, how did they get so drunk so quick? She hasn't even gone on yet. And I was like, oh, they've probably been tailgating for this for like days. Tailgating. Like, oh, we're seeing Cher on Wednesday. We're going to start at 9 a.m. on Tuesday to get ready for Cher. To get ready for a two hour speech and nine songs. Uh, I know, right? Uh, yeah, you're right. You're absolutely right. There's another one. Uh, here's another one. Uh, Madonna is making her uh, tour, you know, reappearance, and uh, oh yeah, I, not not to bash Madonna. I know she she did an awful lot for pop music back in the day, but I often tell some of my friends. I often ask some of my friends, when is it appropriate for some of these icons, male or female, when is it appropriate for some of these guys to just say? I'm going to fucking retire. Well, I have like a very pointed opinion about this because as somebody okay. who's like had to work, somebody who's a non-celebrity who's had to work with celebrities, there is some, so there are some celebrities whose narcissism is so unbelievable that they, ca they cannot get out of their own way. So I think for somebody like Madonna, like while Madonna has literally trailblazed for 40 yeah. years, or sure. 50 years to this point she's like she's one of those people whose ego is so big that she will not be able to stop touring until she's in the ground that's just how it yeah. is like there's we've had yeah. we've had some like some celebrities that we've worked with who are so daft about their place on this planet and it's really crazy like some people who are like very very d-list who th think they're A-list and vice versa. And uh, like we worked with a famous country musician last Christmas and she wanted us to do all these custom prayer candles for her. And we couldn't, she's older and we couldn't get her to take, she couldn't send us a picture. So she was walking around her house on FaceTime, holding her phone up to framed photos of her and other celebrities and just going like, this should work, right? And I'm like, no, that's not how this works. But it's like some <laughs> celebrities are so in their own sense of self that they like yeah. they they're not working with the rest of the world. We're gonna, we're seeing Madonna yeah. next year. Like we got our tickets and everything. And I'm I'm she's like kind of in a bucket list for me. Uh, so I'm I'm excited to see what she's got going on. But you know, I don't know. We'll see if she does that same shit that Cher does, where she sits and talks for two hours. I'm gonna I'm just gonna walk out walk right to the airport and leave. <laughs> yeah, I, you know, I, uh, I performed in bands, you know, in a lot of different capacities for yeah, decades. And I'll be honest with you right now at, at this point in my life, I'm not going to pick up a mic and try to pretend that I can sing like I used to. Yeah. It's like with me and sewing, like, I don't want to sew anymore. I just don't want to sew anymore. It's like, can I sew? Yeah. Do I want to fucking sew anymore? Not really. And it's like, as soon as people, and it's, just, I'm sure you get the same thing. It's like, as soon as people realize I have this like innate skill to sew, they're like, oh, by the way, here's my fucking wedding dress from a hundred years ago. Can you just quickly let it? I'm like, no, 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 we're not doing it. Oh, can you hem all these pants? For no, I cannot hem all these pants for you. No, That's why October no, for no. me is like, October for me is like my mental health. It's like on a razor's edge because people message me all month long with the stupidest bullshit. Oh, I went to Party City and I bought this plastic ass cape. Can you just shorten it? And I'm like, here's what you're going to do. You're going to get a pair of fucking kitchen shears and you're going to cut it off. You're wearing it for two hours and then put it in the trash. I don't care. Right. I care so little right. about this. It'll take me two right. hours to fix this, you know, for what, 10 bucks? Like, what are you talking about? <laughs> such a pain i know right i know i know uh, let me ask you uh now I, we touched on it a little bit uh a bit ago about you know physical locations for bobby k boutique uh mm -hmm. do you do you see in the horizon are, are you going to continue to make it the majority of your business wholesale or online 
or do you see more physical boutiques opening? Well, so in the grand scheme of things, we had originally planned on opening four additional locations in Jacksonville that were going to be open by the end of this year. And so we, the, after the whole situation with our Springfield store and just like this weird, like, just, you know, it's like, we didn't anticipate having to close our Springfield store. So it was like, okay, now we got to stop everything we're doing to close this to figure out what we need to buy for these stores. And it just became this situation where we are definitely pivoting. Uh, we do have at least, we'll have at least two physical presences in Jacksonville in the next like four months, which we're excited about. But as far as like doing another huge Bobby K boutique, I probably won't do another one for at least a while until the real estate kind of levels out and we can like basically pivot ourselves and not have to have a landlord is kind of where I'm at. Um, and our wholesale right now is so crazy and our online is so crazy that it's, it's like we have, you know, full-time warehouse employees that just pack orders all day long just to try to keep up with it. And we still like tend to fall behind because we can't anticipate, you know, a Taylor Swift candle. We can't anticipate that. So then it's like, <laughs> right. oh, we have all these Christmas orders to get out. And now we got all this stuff that's going out. And then we came out with a funny hat last week that we just thought was very innocuous. And it like took off. And so over the weekend, we like moved through hundreds of units. So now we got to get those all boxed up. And it's like just, you know, th with the nature of how our business has evolved, um, we're going to stick with two small things and then explore in the future because we also want to expand into other cities. And so we have a bunch of stores in other cities via wholesale, but I would love to have like a small Brooklyn location and like a small Austin, Texas location that like is just self-managing and we don't really have to be present for that to happen. So we'll see 2024 is right around the corner. We got big plans. So we'll just, we're going to see what happens. That's great. That's great. Yeah, I was just looking at the website, and there's a hat that I want. Party, party captain. Oh yeah, there's an, the same hat. The same hat we have. It says Chaos Demon, which, as you can tell, is self inspired. I saw that. Yeah, self. That's a self inspired hat right there. Yeah, well, I'm going to order one. Uh, so, uh, if you had to tell, I'm going to go with. Uh, we're going to. Uh, Wrap this up here shortly, but I'm going to go with one more question about, uh, you know, uh, some of the ops. Now, we, we, you know, we talked lightheartedly about, you know, some of the, you know, the threats that you get as a gay man, gay business owner, you know, that kind of thing. On a serious note, on a serious note, when you when you do get, you know, threats like that or or. Uh, Maybe even in person, maybe even people that know where you live uh, or or maybe people even that come by your shop, your physical shop and and stir up shit like that. Uh, how do you personally handle that? Um, well, I would say typically some if it's like some sometimes people say some really d just dumb shit. They just they don't yeah, even yeah, realize yeah. it's coming out of their mouth. Um, right. You know, and so like with that kind of stuff, I just take it with a grain of salt. I know that like people love to just live for getting offended by that stuff. And I don't really get that offended. I kind of just put it in like I keep like a Rolodex of bullshit that I kind of just mentally put it in. And then I'm like, <laughs> I'm going to remember that this person always says stupid shit. So next time I see them and they say <laughs> some weird, stupid comment, I'm not going to be livid. Um, but if it's like somebody that comes in and they say some really crazy shit, like I, I, we've only had one really serious one in, in recent history where a guy came in and was trying to TikTok outside and was like being extremely weird to us. And that was, that was weird. It's like, I'm very fortunate that I'm like a 220 pound beefcake. So I just like <laughs> let them know because I always like, I, I don't like believe in the whole, like run with compassion. Because when it comes to shit like this, these people have gotten away with it before, and that's why they're doing it now. So I want to let you know the buck stops here. You think you can go and yeah. bully people and say the crazy shit that you want to say to them? And you think, like, you know, using religion as a tool or a weapon to, like, pr proselytize people and just, like, make them feel less than 
for existing. That's just like not how we operate. So I'm very quick to let them know. And also I'm like really good at reading people, like reading them into the center of the planet. So when they start with that shit, I'm like, let's start with you. Let's go ahead and start from the top down and we'll work our way into it. Sometimes though, yeah. if somebody comes in and they say like something really weird, like, uh, like when did you, they, they pick, they pick up on the context clues and they go like, Oh, you're gay. When did you decide to be gay? And I'm like, Oh, well, when did you decide to be straight? Probably around the same time. And they're like, what? <laughs> I've never thought I've never been challenged this way. And I'm like, you know, it's like, so it's, it's not like I'm, I'm here to like be mean to people, but I'm like, right, I'm not going right, to take any right. of your shit ever. And I'm absolutely going to walk you into the most logical answer. I know a lot of times people say like, it's not my job to teach, but it's like, at the same time, I don't know how people expect to learn. You know, I don't, people don't, if you're homophobic, you're not Googling, how can I have more empathy towards gay people? You're Googling, how do I bully? How do I, how can I be meaner to them? You know, you're not trying to find a, a solution that allows us both to coexist. You're trying to find a solution that puts me in a negative light, makes you feel better about yourself. And at some point, like, it's just good for me, it hits a breaking point. I'm like, okay, so let me go ahead and just read your ass now. So you understand why you look like a fucking clown. You know? Yeah. 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 It doesn't happen very uh, well, often, but we do get some funny shit. Like the, some of the shit people say, I'm like, like we've had, you know, people accuse us of being straight and pretending to be gay for, to just like appeal to gay people. Uh, we, uh, so my other half is Dominican and we've had people like say really crazy shit to him. Like, you know, like you're lucky your skin color is this way and not this way. And we're just like, what are you saying? Like, do you hear yourself? <laughs> like, you have to know, you have to know that that is so stupid and so ignorant to bring yeah. that shit to our door. Yeah. You know, yeah. it's like yeah. we're an interracial yeah. gay married couple running a business. What, like we are the we are the ones you don't want to come for because I, I got you, girl. I'm going to scoop your ass up and I'm going to take you to the street and leave you where you belong with the rest of the rats. Easy. <laughs> yeah, there you go. There you go. Yeah, I do absolutely. enjoy it though, to a degree. It, it's like it's like it's the same for me. It's like the same emotion as like hit, getting to hit one of those giant kickballs that like roll around at the beach. Like it's the same emotion for me. I'm like, we, yeah. this is easy. You know, it's like, <laughs> and, yeah. and it makes that, and it makes Ridiculous, that funny. But still. And, and it makes that funny little ping sound when it hits you in the head. Yes. Cause it's like, what it, <laughs> it there's always, a, there's also a face. Yeah. There's also a face that comes with that sound. So like, let's say for example, somebody comes into the store and they start saying something crazy. I say something back to them. That's like, like they are not expecting it. And it's almost like you're hitting somebody in the face with a kickball. They're like, boing, like you can see it in their face. Like they don't know how to react because they expect that I'm going to be like, Oh, thank you yeah. so much. Yes. I'll immediately run to church. That'll solve all of this. And I'm like, no bitch, I'm going to go, I'm going to go get a Miller light. I'm going to sit around with other people and tell them how stupid you look and how goofy you sound. That's what I'm going to do. So yes, it's, you know, it's kind of like a pie in the face, but like, that's how I like to treat it because there's no other, <laughs> there's really no other way I find it's like, you know, we know people that go to protests and stuff like that. And like, not to sound crazy, but because of insurance purposes, if I get caught on camera at a protest, I'm, my ass is going to lose my insurance policy. So I can't do it because I'm, I'm not, a, I'm Bobby K, but I'm the president of Bobby K Corp. So I can't like, be out and about doing all this crazy shit as much as I would yeah, like yeah, to. Yeah, yeah. So I like to do my own silent little protest and my own little petty way that just piss people off. And it's like a soft troll, you know, if you will, but it's just how I like to handle business. Yeah. Yeah. You, you're exactly right. You know, uh, myself and some of my journalist friends, we we choose to talk about a lot of the uh, protest, silent protests, the you know peaceful demonstrations. Uh, they're they're going on downtown all the time to take them down. Jack people, I love those guys. All the people I've met in that love group them. are are fantastic. But uh, there is that side of us that we actually cannot, you know, show up on camera there. I I. I like you said, 
I, I talk about them all the time. They're friends of mine. And again, some journalist friends of mine said that they will never go to any of those because of that. They and it's not because they don't support them. It, it is a perception thing in the public. Yeah. Well, and plus, like, like for us, we are so like for me, like I'm a very out gay man. And so if I were to go to a protest, I have no doubt in my mind that I would be one of the first people targeted. And with that also being said, it's like we had to during COVID and stuff like COVID did mess up a lot of businesses in the way that we had to change the way we operated. And so mm -hmm. for us, we had to change all of our, you know, insurance policies and all this stuff. And then like, you know, it was like uh, during BLM, a lot of uh, a lot of uh, insurers would not support um, policies because they were afraid of like looting and shit like that, which it doesn't matter at all because it's like we're we're good either way. So it's like now it's now there's like this whole narrative on the back end where it's like if I have to if if I got injured and I had to file a claim, it's like they're like, well, we'd like pictures. And then it's like, well, where did you get injured at? Oh, you went to this thing we told you not to go to. Now I got to go find insurance for my entire staff. And it's like it affects more people than me. So as much as I support pretty much everything like, you know, that's happening progressively, I have to be very careful and mindful in the way that I get involved. And so for me, it's like I do my little petty quips to homophobes all the time. But John and I, like, we do a lot of like, uh, as Bobby K, we secretly donate money a lot. We can't put our name on it. So sometimes if you see like little things pop up, like little GoFundMes for different uh, events around town, we'll slide in there and stuff. And that's like my, that's my commitment and form of protest. If that makes sense. Sure, sure, sure. I'm going to, uh, let's go ahead. I got one last question, maybe comment, you know, for you. Okay. Uh, uh, before we go. And, and, and when we're done here, just keep your browser open for a minute so that your end uploads. It'll only take a second. Uh, but uh, sure. I was re I was recently talking with Jimmy Midget who is now on the staff over there with uh, the new administration and uh, uh, Jacksonville, Florida administration. And Donna Deegan uh, appeared as the very first mayor in Jacksonville's history to be the grand marshal for the pride parade. Uh, and I, love I to think see it. that, uh, yeah, and, and I, I will add too, that probably one of the most diverse um, uh, you know, administrations this city has ever seen. Really, I mean, if you look at the look at the people that are on her staff, uh, she has really brought them in. Everybody, everybody, colors, you know, races, uh, LGBTQ uh, representation, uh, just just the most diverse I've ever seen. And I think there's going to be some positive things happening in Jacksonville because of this woman and her vision. Oh, agreed for sure. I think too, something that was like really exciting to see about that was that, mm -hmm. you know, she took what I felt like were people who were at the top of their game in Jacksonville and mm -hmm. put them in appropriate positions. So like when we saw like yes. Melissa yes. Ross went over there, you know, it's like, that's a great, it's like she took the best of the best and put them in the best case scenario for her mayoral, mayoral run to like essentially get us on track, like a, a, a direction of inclusivity for once, yeah. you know? Yes. So it's like, yeah. it's yeah. crazy. It took us this long, but it's nice to see, you know, it's like, it, you know, any like one step forward is a step forward regardless. It's not, it's not going to happen overnight. We know this. So just seeing that when I saw the pictures, I was like elated. I was like, oh my gosh, I'm so happy about this. So, yeah. but yeah, love that. We're excited for it. Yeah, it's amazing. Uh, Bobby, I tell you what, it has been a pleasure having you on the podcast today. Uh, you are welcome to come back anytime. Be sure to stick around for just a second after we stop recording. I will provide everyone in the descriptions and in the comments with all your links. Awesome. Great. Thanks for having me. Well, that's a wrap. Another fantastic episode of the podcast. You can find us on all 
the social media platforms, wherever you serve, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter X, threads, wherever. Don't forget to like, share, and comment. And on our YouTube channel, don't forget to like, share, comment, and smash that subscribe button. If you're streaming audio for the podcast, you can find us wherever you get your favorite podcast programs. In the meantime, I like to tell everybody, take care of yourselves and each other. Until next time. Peace.